Welcome everyone to the OC Show. This is episode uh, season three, episode six, and we are here live from the HWBot World Tour 2016 here in uh, Montreal at the LAN ETS. Uh, that's the um, the sixth episode of this season three. We actually kickstart the season three at the um, uh, the World Tour in Brazil. Then we had one of the live show actually three weeks ago in South Africa, and now we have one more live show during one of the world tour uh, that is uh, quite great and we have some uh, special guests with us tonight from the from the LAN ETS um, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and uh, this is uh, Timothée right here Hey Truth, how's it going? Yeah, it's going well, we have to share the microphone because we have a uh, no, uh, we want to have our guests to have a special uh, feeling and uh, first guest to, uh, to welcome uh, on the show is um, Mr. William from the LAN ETS Hey, how are, how are you doing? Doing great, and you guys? Uh, it's uh, doing all good here, and uh, Christian Ney as well. You're doing fine. <laughs> Christian Ney, the, the judge for uh, for this event. Uh, we had a few topics. We wanted to talk with some of the Canadian uh, overclickers, but sadly some of uh, some of them were uh, actually went a little bit too hard on the qualifier. So, uh, Timothée, let's go straight to the first topic, is the update of the competition on OC Esports. So what was happening for the past few weeks? Um, so the past few weeks we've been on the road, but it doesn't mean the competitions have stopped at uh, OC Esports. Um, so um, if you look at the schedule on OC Esports, actually, you can see all the competitions going on. The one that has been in the highlights, I think, on the forums was the G-Skill OC World Cup uh, 2016. So the qualifiers for that one. It's a very tough competition. Why? Because there's IGP overclocking involved here. It's actually the first time there's such a high-level, high-profile competition making use of IGP instead of actual proper GPUs. And it seems that the extreme overclockers that I used to clock I, uh, GPUs are actually, well, they're being struggling. Well, that's, yeah, they're all struggling. It's, it, it is very tough. The IGPs are actually uh, much more fragile than what people were expecting them. Or maybe it's just the extreme overclockers are not uh, fully used, you know, to, to bench. Uh, IGPs in the soft way they should be benched. So I guess we've seen, for example, uh, Dan Cup, the current uh, number one, going through maybe six CPUs already or something like that. Uh, so he announced uh, this week that he would be um, on his Facebook page, he would stop killing more CPUs and that he would actually just leave it as it is right now with his cores. Um, he said he would leave it as it is, but he didn't say that was that he had posted all his scores. So we'll see what comes there. Right now in the ranking, we have Hassan from Indonesia, that is first. And we have, um, of course, our Polish uh, overclocker, Extreme Addict, second, always there when there's a live competition, and especially when there's a live one where there's cash to win. Dan Cup, same thing. He's number one as well. And he's there to defend his title, third place at the moment. Alex Atro, fourth. And we have also Tool Use, Raccoon, Bull Shooter, and Orion 24. And uh, we also have Dr. Weiss from South Africa, ninth at the moment, and Mark0053, who is actually um, the current leader of the qualifiers here in uh, North America, who is ranked 10th. So that's that's really, and really And that's cool. the guy that was supposed to be on the show with us tonight and actually didn't show up. I think he's just very tired and he went to for a break and maybe he just fell asleep. There's some very nice couches at the LAN ETS upstairs in the lounge, so maybe he just went for a break, you know, and just ended up staying there or something. Anyway, let's keep going with the competition. So go back to the schedule, Truth, so people can see everything that was going on. Of course, Rookie, Ruby, rookie not a Rumble uh, never stops. Now we just nimble never stops uh, maybe we can have a quick look but I'm not sure it's really necessary to go over that in details you guys can have a look okay let's have a look then overclockers.ua uh, always there when it comes to team competitions no matter if it's uh, the old school is best school or here the novice nimble a very active team overclockers overclock.net um, was actually waving the US flag but it's also a slash Canada place so I mentioned this because here we are in Canada so uh, a lot of Canadians actually like this forum as well. And we have Carcutland finally back in the Novice Dimble here. I wish we can see them as well in the other team competitions, but anyway, that's uh, that's really cool to see. Other competition at the moment. Let's go back to the schedule. Back in the over here as well. Uh, the Skylake 5G challenge. This one is going on all year. It's not going to stop. So I'll let you guys have a look by yourself for that one. Uh, we had also uh, some beta competitions that ended recently. We had the ROG one. There's another one here for the Y Cruncher beta competition. 67 overclockers involved. Well, actually, quite popular. It's uh, quite surprising. This is a 
new kind of benchmark. It's based on the pi calculations. It's a little bit like SuperPi, but a bit more improved as a benchmark. It's quite cool. It's been developed by some uh, people from the community. It's uh, really nice. I uh, recommend you try it out. And it's been integrated with the HDBot API, which is uh, why this benchmark is right now currently in beta as a new. Um, so yeah, really cool. Yeah, actually, uh, I went on the website and uh, and downloaded the uh, the. Uh can I say that the, the executable for for it, and uh, it's still like it used, they didn't have a GUI for a long time, so uh, it's actually more uh, useful now to just uh, jump in the benchmark and uh, and have it. Yeah. And so uh, among the other competitions going on, the one we want to highlight today as well is the HDBot X uh, Goa Overclocking School in Spain. So uh, Uscal is a huge uh, land party series in Spain, uh, mostly in the north uh, northwest part of Spain, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anyway, those guys have uh, three different land parties. They have, um, so they have one in um, in a Bilbao, which is the biggest one, and that's the f uh, here, this one in Gipuzkao, that's the first one they do. And uh, so they had this weekend, at the same time we are having this event here, they had also an overclocking school there, and overclocking workshops. And so apparently they had nine people participating in their tournament there. So that's really cool. And uh, from what I hear, the two first overclockers, they had a first time initi initiation to LN2 overclocking as Already? a kind of a prize thing. Mm. And that's pretty cool. And I think they did a little show off there, or some kind of match. Uh, so pretty cool. And there's a funny nickname called Rest in Peace. Uh, very funny. Haha. <laughs> 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 ha. All right. So that's about it, I think, for the competitions. If you want to check the other ones out, just go to oc-esports.io and check out what's going on over there over there oh and there's a nice little additions you saw the little camera icon that tells you there's a live stream attached to a competition and that's all for the uh, azure built world tour that we have here at the LAN ets and uh, speaking out speaking of uh, the LAN ets we have uh, william with us uh, william you're part of the executive at the LAN ets can you describe and present yourself uh, on the people on the stream Yes, uh, I'm William Lefrancois. I'm uh, an executive member of LAN ETS. Uh, my role is uh, mostly uh, sponsorship, partnership, communication, all bundled together. I've been a part of the organization since uh, 2012. Well, actually, I remember that uh, when I, I first came for the first few um, first few demonstrations about overclocking at the LAN ETS, I was uh, mostly discussing with you. And last year was supposed to be your last year. What happened? <laughs> well, you know, it's always hard to retire. And uh, we had uh, this project. Uh, we were planning this new project to expand. So at the end, I'm like, well, OK, let's do this another year and uh, see how it goes. So speaking of the, ex uh, the expansion itself, so last year, there was like 1,000 gamer maximum, if I'm right. And how many tickets did you sell for this specific year, year now in 2016? What we did at first is uh, we planned uh, the venue setup for 2000 BYUC and eventually we expand the eSports stage. So we stopped uh, this weekend at uh, close to 1900 seats. I think it's 1860 seats. I will need to check the last numbers, but well, but still that's quite that's quite huge. You you almost yeah. doubled the size from yeah. compared to last year. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it was the goal. It was to you know don't want to do an expansion just for 200 more seats, change the venue at the same time. It's you need to, to double. And the, the the space for the uh, like for the extra booth, like extra activities, like where we are for the HW bot wall tour as well. Uh, this one is actually quite big as well. Uh, was that part of the plan from the beginning to expand both the BYOC uh, and the um, like the the, the sponsors slash activities? Yeah, exactly. At first, uh, the, the main idea is to use the, the, the you know, the main hall, the main uh, room. But we had this in our back pocket. We're like, okay, for any reason, I don't know. There's it's just selling like crazy. At one point, you're like, okay, you don't want to go to five thousand, but if there's room for <laughs> four, five hundred more, you go for it. So that means that next year you can double again. <laughs> uh, well, technically. Uh, yeah, I could, but no, you might have to invest happen. in more land cables. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This year, add uh, to double all the equipment. So that's actually crazy because there's as well a lot of activities uh, in this 2016. You have like a huge, uh, huge scene and a smaller one. So, um, what were the main activities that you guys had on on the big scene? 
on the big stage? Uh, yeah, the big stage uh, tomorrow is going to be used for esports mostly. Right now, so it's, it's used for some finals of tournament. Uh, what we did is uh, we had an uh, orchestra, so a video game orchestra from uh, local uh, performers. So they use the big scene to do their show. It's uh, able to welcome close to a thousand person this stage. So that's the idea to adapt it for that kind of activities with, uh, you know, orchestra or esports. And we have the smaller one. It's all for the stunts, you know, mostly the sponsors stunts uh, do conduct some interviews uh, for the streams. And uh, we had a bunch of activities with the Expo Zone. We added the Expo Zone with close to 30 partners. Uh, we had companies bringing uh, their computers. You can try their stuff, VR, HTC Vive. Uh, you have some cool stuff, dodgeball, you can shoot arrow, uh, and all that. Yeah, it's, it was pretty good. Well, actually, that's, that's true. There was a lot of stuff about VR. Uh, I th it seems to be one of the keywords uh, for everything that is coming. Uh, side notes before talking back to the events. Uh, do you think that VR will become mainstream one day? Uh, Personal comment well, here. Huh? <laughs> well, I think, I think it has a good momentum. It's all about the, you know, the, the price of the, of course, buying the whenever it is the oculus or the htc vive or other playstation also but it's also the equipment you need the extra equipment so that's what's gonna limit people to it's gonna limit it to become mainstream at the beginning but i think their companies are pushing too hard for it to fail right now it's a big marketing dollar getting in a vr that's for sure well, there's some big names like Valve is in it, HTC is in it. Like that's gonna be a, a huge market. They they forecast that to be a huge market as well. Um, <clears throat> speaking about but the uh, the LAN ETS, you guys always had some. Well, let's say th there was always fun to come here, even as a gamer or even as uh, as uh, exhibitors. Was always fun. Uh, are you still doing the uh, scavenger hunt this year? Yeah, yeah, it's still going on, and uh, everywhere, every year, the way we try to do it is uh, executive member of Lan ETS. We have, we have to, you know, to add uh, new stunts on the list. So we choose ourselves what we want to add, and we don't talk to each other. So they know that I don't like to stop and take picture with people uh, during the weekend. So they added a stunt that you need to stop me take picture, replace my <laughs> face with a troll face, all that stuff. So me, yeah, I do other uh, other stunts to annoy my colleagues. So it's pretty good. So can, can you um, explain one more stunt that you guys uh, you guys did this weekend that you personally liked? Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of them, but uh, before we had an energy drink called uh, Balls, Balls Energy Drink, and <laughs> it's almost impossible to find this locally. So there's a stunt you need to bring back one of those to us, and then, well, well since once you brought back a, a bottle, we just drink it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> so, so I also heard about some some stunt regarding Tinder or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what was I that about? Because some guys were here in the workshop, they were like, dude, like, have you seen that? Like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't <laughs> see uh, all the stunts, but I know there's one with uh, <laughs> Tinder. I didn't read all of them, but there's some crazy stuff. Uh, so yeah, I there. think you have to get a date with someone yeah. from Tinder and you have to bring them to the LAN ETS. Yeah, yeah, it's no something way. like that. Something yeah. like that. So it, the, yeah, some guys were like, dude, like, I gave so many likes the whole weekend and, trying to get somebody. And I think you're not allowed to just bring the person like at the entrance. You need to convince the person or at least pay for the person. To get inside, <laughs> yeah. so, so you have to give them a funnier. date at the LAN yeah. ETS actually. Yeah, it's a ten dollar <laughs> minimum date for the visitor pass. <laughs> that's so oh, awesome. but th this one is awesome actually. <laughs> that, that's great. Oh boy, um, there's a lot of uh, of tournament as well. There's a lot of uh, cash price involved. Um, the cash price, I didn't actually check exactly the uh, the amount of the LAN ETS. Do you uh, do you know it by heart? It's uh, forty five thousand cash for uh, tournaments. It's spread amongst uh, different tournaments. The two biggest ones are uh, Counter-Strike and uh, League of Legends. Uh, $10,000 each for oh. the prize pool. And uh, we had 112 team for League of Legends. So it's a record for us. I think it's a record in Canada. No, no event had that much gamers for League of Legends. And uh, Counter-Strike, we had 82 teams. So that might be also a record. Uh, for that tournament. So and you started uh, the matches yesterday all the way into today? Uh, it started uh, today. 
today. Earlier uh, this morning at uh, 9 a.m. But the way the brackets are done, it's you know it's going uh, smoothly. You, you hope uh, you don't have any problem, and uh, everything goes fine. Cool. And, uh, that, that's cool. There's uh, you, you have a lot of games as well, uh, a lot of games uh, of the tournament. So that there's some Rocket League. There's uh, yes. uh, a lot of uh, of, uh, of tournament. But how do you decide which is the tournament you get? You just open some seat, and if there's more people joining, you just open more seats. How does how does that well, work? We know that some games in the Quebec market, Canadian market, are pretty strong, like League of Legends, Counter Strike, Hearthstone is very strong. We had a uh, one. 105 person this year at Hearthstone. Uh, Dota 2 is not uh, that bad in attendance. StarCraft 2. So it's a kind of game we bring. And this year with the expansion, we're like, okay, we have more space. So let's bring more game. Even if there's only 50 participants, it's, you know, the idea is to give a chance to new games. So we brought uh, Rocket League, uh, Heroes of the Storm. Uh, Sometimes people ask for game. We try to add them. It's, uh, and also, there's a sponsor. Sponsor sometimes try to, you know, influence the selection <laughs> of the game. So some people like to add games. You mean like overclocking, for example? <laughs> yeah. About to say. <laughs> it's a, it, it can be classified as a game. Well, it's now classified as an esports. So it is, yes. we can uh, we can say it's an esports tournament at the event. Yeah. Yeah, some people were actually like, oh yeah, that's actually, it's like, you know, the racing part of the, the, the eSports scene, you have the gaming part and you could have like the artistic side with modding and then you would have the whole thing complete. <laughs> do, you have, do you actually had some uh, modding competitions or exhibitions where people bring their mods and show off? Yeah, we had the Cooler Master that uh, where they had a boot where oh, yeah. you could do some uh, mod uh, on your com on the their ca with their cases. So they were showing people uh, how to do it, and their setup was pretty cool. It was looking like you know you were entering your garage and uh, oh, workshop you could, uh, style, yeah, 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 workshop style. So it was pretty good, uh, and a lot of people went to their stand. Cool. So I have a question now for Christian, who's been quite silent until now. So Christian, it's your first time at LAN ETS. First yeah. First time at LAN ETS, what do you think so far? Uh, I like it. I mean, it's big. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of space, a lot of people, a lot of activities. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a cool venue. So have you been to other LAN parties before? Yes, yes. As I've... big as this one? Um, no, I don't think so. It wasn't <laughs> as big as this one. So w would you do it again from what you've seen? Or would you like to become a gamer again and go into the crowd over there? <laughs> um, not sure. Yeah, it's tempting, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's taking a lot of time. Yeah, you still prefer to uh, manage all the scores on the database and, uh, yeah, and like kick 700 of them in one day. Yeah, <laughs> it's taking even more time. <laughs> Oh, that's that's crazy, and um, we it's it's been a while we have been uh, you know uh, working or doing things with the LAN ETS. Uh, it's always fun to uh, to see you guys grow as well. Uh, you did an awesome work uh, so far; like everything was pitch uh, pitch perfect. So like we arrived here, like the the network was okay, like the like people came to to put the tables on and, uh, and everything. It's uh, it's good, but how many volunteers do you have? Because this is mostly done by volunteers. Yeah, well, the executive team is uh, around twenty person. And for volunteers this year, we reach uh, 130. So it's similar to what we did in the past. And with the new venue, we have some posts. Before, we had to check a lot of uh, security exit because the university had a lot of doors here. It's like one entrance, one exit. So you have free volunteers you can reallocate to other locations. So it's helping us a lot. And yeah, well, even 130 volunteers, it's not that much for an event like that. And for more for almost 2,000 gamers, that's that's definitely not that much. It's actually uh, no. it's actually crazy. Um, uh, all the volunteers are from the uh, from the ETS from the ETS school. Oh, it's uh, of course there's a lot of them. It's uh, people we know. We studied with them. Uh, you know, they tried to help us. And uh, but a lot of uh, volunteers are sometimes gamers attending the event, so they help during all the setup. So they're like, okay. 
Anyway, I'm gonna have to wait in line to enter at 6 p.m. on the Friday, so I'm gonna volunteer between 12 <laughs> and 6 p.m. I'm gonna get a free t-shirt, free swag. Uh, and I can get in early on and not queue, right? <laughs> you no, know, it's not supposed to happen like that, but you know, some of them are smart and they yeah. find a way to... Uh, to come to up with their yeah the sneakers with a lot of the uh, their computers they find a way uh, to bring it. <laughs> yeah so you just you just crank up the amount of volunteers request for next year just by saying that <laughs> yeah exactly uh, all volunteers will be like oh okay good idea i need to volunteer before the opening yeah it's a good way to get more volunteers i'm bringing some duct tape and my computer <laughs> <laughs> my computer is full of duct tape anyway <laughs> Oh well. Um, well, thank you very much, William. Um, I hope that uh, you uh, you enjoy doing this. Uh, I guess you do because you know otherwise you would have uh, you would have stopped. Um, on your on more personal note, do you have uh, any other project coming on uh, for like around gaming or esports in Montreal? Well, um, I have the I will say I have the honor to work on uh, Dreamac Canada. That's a new project announced. Uh, like two weeks ago and after LAN ETS I'm gonna start to work on that uh, a lot more and uh, it's planned for August same venue as here so working hard on this and who knows maybe a big announcement coming soon about the event so should check the <laughs> Facebook so, so Montreal is becoming sort of the the esports slash LAN party city of North America because I mean, like in Northern America, besides uh, very few cities in the U.S. where you have LAN parties of more than 1,000 people, um, there's actually not that many places with LAN parties of that scale, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, that kind of event, Remac, it's you need to bring the big experience. We always see sports, uh, Expo Zone, and Montreal is built for this. We just saw it this weekend. I mean, close to 2,000 BYUC in a more, you know, local event. Uh, not the same scale as DreamHack, so I think it's a good thing that Montreal is now recognized as a destination for gaming, not just for jobs in gaming, but esports and competition. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Actually, I do live in Montreal as well for the people uh, just tuning in the, in the live chat, uh, while uh, Timothy and uh, Christian doesn't, don't live actually, uh, at all in North America. Uh, Montreal is very well known for the game industry. Like there's the uh, Ubisoft, Gameloft. Uh, there's so many, uh, so many of these like Eidos and so on. There's so many of these uh, big studio and indie studio as well. And for for years, for the past five years at least, I heard people saying like, "Come on, we need we need like E Cube is always back in, uh, in in the US, and we need some big stuff here." So this is might maybe the beginning of uh, something that you know that, that can grow bigger for that. Um, I think that that would be quite great for Montreal and for the people here that uh, that love games because. That's, let's let's face it. There's a ton of game developers in this town. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that uh, some of those stuff are actually like studying for that. I guess. Yeah, the the ND scene is very good, very strong, and uh, big studios. Like just like this weekend here, we have Ubisoft. It's and having Ubisoft in your event, it's not that uh, easy. Uh, you can count them, and you're only one hand uh, the amount of event are able to attract. Uh, company like Ubisoft and you have other big studio, uh, EA is here and uh, Beanox and uh, etc. So also big indie scene. So it's company we hope to see at a big event like uh, DreamHack or even Lanitias. So. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Send me emails. Wink, wink. <laughs> Here's my email down below. <laughs> <laughs> So you're gonna get two kind of emails: the the sponsors for for the next event, and all the next volunteers that just want to get in. Yeah. They're not doing the, yeah, the line. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to forward all the people. volunteers to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> forward, 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 yeah. forward. It's like guys, guys. The, the, at the next meeting, it's like guys, guys. We have like 1,500 volunteers for next year. What can we do? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, well, thank you for all the information about the LAN ETS itself. Um, but I want to ask you a few more questions regarding the overclocking from an outsider point of view. So, um, how far or how much do you know about overclocking right now? Well, how much I know about it. I, I saw that uh, you guys are doing some uh, crazy stuff right now. You know, like maybe, well, five years ago. I was going uh, to LAN parties still before even starting at LAN ETS and you know people were overclocking their CPU and uh, it's now it's it's all that uh, 
you know, uh, what you guys doing, benching and uh, everything, it's it's gone crazy and you have all your, your league. At the point when you reach the league format, you have standing, you have event around the world, that's where you reach a whole new level. And I think that's why now overclocking is not just the, you know, casual thing you do, you, t you do you're like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna overclock my CPU for fun because... Uh, I know I can do it. We're doing that like five, ten years ago in land party, and uh, you guys now uh, do some. Uh, yeah, it's it's very impressive what you're doing, and uh, a lot of people are interested. Like people that know nothing about overclocking, how it's done. They're very interested. They see people like, oh, I can do that with my gear. Like what I actually buy, I don't need anything special. Okay, I can reach that level with uh, my own PC. Okay. okay. It became it became a lot lot a lot simpler in the last last few years. Like uh, everything is now you can almost overclock in anything from a Windows desktop point of view when you start. So it makes the the entry barrier to overclocking a lot lower. Like we had kids, I think today in the workshop. Like some some kid was maybe ten years old or something like that, and he did really well. He's a, he's in the top twenty. So that was really well done. He was there with his dad, and he his dad couldn't understand how good his kid was he was like oh this is this is crazy you're the next champion and, and they were actually coming here as visitors they were here to support their 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 favorite gaming team so that was actually pretty cool and i think most people they would just go home and try it by themselves so have you tried it on your computer oh no, well not at the level your guys are doing for sure but in the past yeah you know we had this old uh, well the md i don't remember it's the md uh, Athlon, uh, i think the 64 or something like that yeah. was easy to overclock in the past you had uh, some model from uh, it was an intel q6 uh, 660 I don't remember exactly 6600 yeah. yeah 6600 it was the easy one to overclock so that's the kind of stuff I was doing just say uh, messing around the BIOS and uh, modifying <laughs> stuff uh, back in 2007 <laughs> yeah exactly so that's the kind and of this was the was good doing. old days yeah. <laughs> yeah I was feeling powerful am I I'm able yeah. to tweak in the BIOS and people are looking oh look at this blue screen oh well, what you're doing oh <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> I got no, the blue screen still exists, and that's yeah, the fun tr part of it. Tr now, trust. It has a nice, uh, now it has a nice smiley to it, so it's cool. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Windows, uh, Microsoft said they will add QR code to the blue screen to for you to scan and <laughs> maybe find the, the find issue. Out what's going on. <laughs> oh, Christian, you have something to say about that? No comment. <laughs> uh, I think he wants to say that QR code is outdated. Uh, I, I hope, I do hope that we can change it and have a QR code that say the judge is always wrong, just for you. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, overclicking the past and um, some of the uh, of the workshop that we're doing here at the uh, at the World Tour because this Aussie show is live from the HW, uh, well, HWT here in North America. And um, some of the, the people that took the workshop were like, oh, no, no, but I don't know if this is working. So there's still, a, you know, like a, a little bit of fear of breaking things up um, when it's actually super safe now. Um, actually, do you, uh, the, the, the tricky question is, do you own a laptop or a desktop now? <laughs> Me right now? Yeah, yeah I switched to, uh, not, not a laptop, an Ultrabook. So it's different, Ooh. you know, so it's a different league. So yeah, I, I switched from my desktop to Ultrabook and, uh, you know, now they're pretty uh, powerful, but it's not the same, the same thing as having a desktop. It's more customizable. You, you feel more like a gamer that knows stuff. You're like, yeah, I can change. Like owning it. a big truck, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you need to show off. Uh, yeah, you can pimp it and <laughs> stuff exactly. like that. Pimp my PC. This is actually like a. <laughs> there was a show like. This. There was a show like this. It actually made by uh, by really? Asus, I think. Like the. No, I think it's uh, NCIX. Nah. NCIX. NCIX did it. I think yeah, they I think they so. did pimp my PC in France with Wizards as well. Yeah, it was, it was called, Asus. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Ah. Well, pimp my PC like with pimp, exhibit. from pimp my ride, right? <laughs> yeah. From MTV. <laughs> Well, we did an activity uh, like Pimp My PC. People needed to bring a whole computer with crappy part. And, uh, <laughs> from like from uh, we swapped some com ridiculous computer. We added, uh, we were about to add a new video card and we we're like, no, your computer is too old. 
we cannot <laughs> give you this video card and we're not even sure we're able to give you a SSD. <laughs> <laughs> It's not gonna work. It doesn't has IDE connection. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that that that's crazy. Um, what is the uh, the oldest computer you ever own? Oldest, uh, for sure. Uh, I rem uh, for sure, I remember uh, when I was younger. My, it's my mom. Uh, she was working for Bell, and uh, she had this, uh, you know, the Pens Pentium One computer with the turbo button. Oh, yeah, you could yeah. push it and like one of those, 130 yeah. theory megahertz oh, oh now so powerful and you activated the turbo and you installed starcraft one and it was working you were like oh, oh so powerful <laughs> and, the, and, that, all and the then beige, you ended up with uh, turbo case. always on <laughs> yeah 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 the fan was spinning Well, it's like it's like the the turbo mode is back actually like like 20 years after the turbo mode yeah. is actually directly in the CPU now <laughs> so they, they they keep on adding it you just don't have to push the button anymore <laughs> um, Timo did you have any question for for William um, I think that's about it besides um, I'm looking forward uh, to be back here next year eventually hopefully it's gonna be if it's at the same place I hear it might be at the same place. I hear that nobody wanted to share the date, but I hear that it's already on the way. <laughs> so Maybe. hopefully uh, we'll see Lani Ties <laughs> back at this place. He didn't even teach, he didn't even <laughs> smile when you were saying it. That, that is actually quite good. <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, so I hear they will be back and we will be uh, gladly joining back the event again. It was really great so far and tomorrow it's going to be epic to see uh, everyone joining from the finals as, as much for overclocking as for gaming as well, so it's going to be great. Uh, this is definitely a massive success uh, for for the Lanitias. Uh, congratulations, guys! Uh, this uh, the ramp up was actually quite impressive. That was not something easy to do, and uh, we do appreciate that, uh, like the, the, you know, the, all the amount of time and hours that you are uh, putting all that, and of course all the all the work from the volunteers. Uh, we count yeah, on you to, uh, to 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 put the, to bring back the message to them. Uh, As well for as yeah, well for they're, that. they're the key to the event because our us the executive board 20 member we can do a lot of stuff but without the volunteers and of course without the gamers we're nothing if nobody is buying tickets it's not worth it to invest all this time well uh thank you very much uh, let's talk a bit, little bit with uh, christian yeah i will wake you up no 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 i'm looking at you christian <laughs> Um, so we, we are, you were the judge at the World Tour. Uh, let's talk about more about a little bit more you as a judge. What is the most difficult part when you have this kind of uh, extreme overclocking competition? Uh, get the website working. <laughs> that, that, that's not cool for Peter. <laughs> it did actually fix it at like 4 a.m. in the night. So <laughs> yeah, that, that was well. quite insane. But I mean, more on the judging side, like the, the rules in the overclocking world, are they um, defined enough by today to have um, an announcement up front to be sure that everyone will have the same rules when they get in at the event for the overclocking competition? Yeah, for competitions, it's pretty pretty straightforward. So yeah, for, the co for competitions, uh, everything is written black and white and uh, uh, they, they also know uh, what we do for years and nothing has changed much so yeah no problem and um back to the uh, to the uh, like the more like what you do on a day-to-day -day basis you do moderate the score on hw bot but exactly what are you doing how does that work for you in the in the back end how do you mean I mean, well, you, you get only the submission or you just go through all the scores that were submitted in the same day or just uh, check the ones that are reported? No, I mean, there are thousands and thousands of scores every day, so I'm not going <laughs> over all of that. Uh, usually, we I um, go over the scores that are reported by uh, community members or, or either via uh, using the button uh, to report on the website directly or if when they do report to me like on Facebook on by uh, email or private message and uh, they are also I'm not only doing moderation but also database cleanup so when uh, scores are uh, posted uh, in, in the wrong place I just uh, attempt the correct ranking Well, that's uh, that seems to be a good uh, a good buzzy work for you. Uh, I heard that you uh, yeah you smashed the previous record of the amount of submission in one day. <laughs> How many yeah, was 
moderated submissions. So how how many of them did you do in the one full day? Uh, close to one thousand. Holy hell! <laughs> in in twenty four hours or just in like eight to five? Uh, I think I did like uh, almost four hundred in an hour, and uh, and <laughs> and then uh, I I did a bit again in the in the afternoon. So how many? Do you remember how many scores you did actually delete? <laughs> Uh, I wasn't deleting. I actually, those scores were. Uh, I think I, I don't know what caused it, but uh, like 1,400 scores were uh, moved to a particular motherboard, uh, and this board it's a board that almost nobody used. So the, the job was to move everything back to the correct motherboard. So you were you were fixing stuff basically. Yeah, but on on this day, yes, this day, yes, I cleaned. Uh, Everything that was wrong with this motherboard. So, if you have a, if the way that we have a reliable database is mostly due to your work and some of the uh, other community yes. guys that help you out. Junk boards, Antinomi, uh, Carl, uh, and I, uh, yes. So, as you know, that's that's the thing. The LAN ETS cannot run without the volunteers. The HW database cannot be reliable without the volunteers. Uh, these guys have, I know they, they deserve, you know, they deserve some credits, huh? Uh, of course they do. And talking about speaking of volunteers, we have two volunteers here at the World Show as well, and we want to to thank them. That's uh, Samuel and Camille. Uh, actually, Camille is, was one of the um, uh, of the amateur Rookie. from last year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think he finished uh, third or fourth in the competition, or second maybe. No, not second. Third or fourth uh, in the competition last year here at the LAN ETS. So he was one of the rookies. Uh, I think he's a good friend of you as well. Um, so yeah, he, he, he volunteered to, to help us here at the LAN ETS, he did an awesome job. You know, it's not just teaching them overclocking and then showing them how it works in the machine. You have to kind of uh, help people out when the system is kind of stuck. You have to uh, welcome people arriving to the booth. You know, you always have to be smiling the whole day. Uh, okay, sure, your, your leg hurts at some point, your feet hurt, so you still have to keep going. and. Uh, welcome people, uh, explain them what we are doing over and over again because every time the people don't know so you have to re-explain it uh, and then then you, you guide them through the workshop and as they are doing it you, you're trying to help them out, uh, explain them in a, in a nice way, in a funny way as well so because you want them to have a nice experience so it's kind of a, it's artistic work almost to, to do that the whole day and they, they did it very well like since we are having fun here on the show you know those guys are Behind the curtain, they're packing all the stuff. Like, so they're, they're really amazing guys. Um, and uh, also, you, uh, Christian, you helped us out a lot for the event as well. So it's it's really it was a really great team here. It's amazing. Well, I, we uh, I always love to uh, to do this kind of event, and of course, with the volunteers, that will uh, that would be nothing. Um, well, thanks all to all the volunteers. Let's switch to uh, another topic for for tonight. Um, let's talk about some stuff that are reward. So so far, we'll, what we will talk about are some stuff that are not yet officially on the market. Uh, Pascal GPU from NVIDIA and Polaris GPU 10 and 11 from AMD. Christian, what do you think about which will be like winning or? I didn't follow. I, I didn't follow the the, the news on uh, on those GPUs yet. So since it's all speculation, I, I'm waiting for official specs. O official specs and commitment. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> waiting for the white papers. <laughs> oh, you mean the paper lunch? Yeah, as well. <laughs> uh, William, what would you expect uh, in the next uh, in the next few years in terms of uh, you no know, computing powers? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to say, but like now I think like in the CPU, it's quad core is like becoming standard. 32 gig of RAM is becoming standard. So I think soon we're going to switch to... I don't know what system to, you have, but 32 what? gigs is a, oh, it's a nice no, standard. I, I yeah, admit, yeah, I have but, the same here, but... Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, like two years ago, a lot of people True. had 16 gigs, you know? Yeah. So now people are switching to 32. So I think it's going to go to 64 pretty soon. One, two years, people will be like, yeah, 32, it's nothing. Let's go 64 <laughs> just to stack some uh, virtual machine on the on our desktop. And CPU will follow, pretty sure, uh, 8 core, something like that. We, yeah. Step up. Intel and might have something eh? in store. 
Yeah, I hear there will be some some ten core stuff coming around Computex time, according to the rumors. But I think they're pretty, pretty well, straightforward. No, it's it's see. always the same thing. The, the rumor says that pretty much everyone will put out new stuff early June, and the thing is, early June that's Computex. So, well, no one says they're gonna put out stuff at Computex. They just say that early June you will have all the information. So that's you know, it's like you don't speak about it, but they no, it's like ah. Okay, so you know, so basically everything that was happened around Computex just before or the the week after, depending on the uh, on the lunch they want to do. But of course, I mean uh, all the uh, all the no all the exposure is at Computex. And speaking of Computex, earlier this week, actually two days ago, there was some nice stuff going on, and I. Uh, I, I told you guys in the opening show that we will um, talk a little bit more about that, about that, and now it's public. Look at this. This is on Yahoo Finance, and it's the title is Gaming at Computex 2016. More than 30 exhibitors and an HWBot World Tour Overclocking Competitions. How awesome is that? There's a complete PR. Uh, actually, this is the PR, but I think there's a, a picture of Peter on the oh yeah on the official Computex Taipei website. Look at this. So there's uh, people from uh, from some of our uh, of the partner that we have been uh, working with. This uh, I can see that there's uh, some guy from Cooler Master in there as well, and you can see Peter in the shot. So Peter is the director at uh, HW. But uh, Timothy, can you explain what was uh, this all about? Because that's the reason why Peter cannot be here with us. I'm not aware of anything. No, <laughs> actually. Um, <laughs> um, so Peter was there, yeah, because there was this uh, press conference. So that's why he couldn't uh, be here. So um, um, he went there, and the uh, the idea of the press conference was to share with uh, the media there what what was coming up at Computex. So there's indeed a, a big HDIBOT World Tour event coming up there, and this year uh, for the first time, HDIBOT is going to have a booth on Computex. So. So, so until now, until now, we we always uh, booked the venue after Computex on the uh, in a side venue where uh, overclockers after the whole frenzy of Computex could go there and uh, basically relax and chill out with their friends. And uh, what we did this year is that we moved the world tour at the same time there is Computex. So it's gonna run the during the whole Computex week. Um, details are going to follow later on. Um, and basically for the whole week, people can just participate to a regular World Tour type event. So it's the kind of usual thing we see. So there's always, like we, uh, we had a LAN ETS, there was a workshop for amateurs for people that want to learn about overclocking. It's going to be, of course, a competition, a World Series class competition. And we'll have, of course, an OC gathering slash kind of bench party. So people attending Computex, overclockers attending Computex uh, can go there. There will be uh, LN2 provided during the whole week and uh, they can basically grab a seat there and stay there the whole week. So actually the tickets are already on sale, so if you go to hjabot.org uh, and you go to the, um, the World Tour uh, 2016 landing page, over there you have a link to the Eventbrite page where you can buy your tickets for that. So if uh, some extreme overclockers are watching, um, you can actually get it there and um, grab your ticket. So that's what's going to come at Computex. There's also other things that are going to be there. There's the G-Skill World Cup, we, we, we talked about it. So we're also in sync with them to make sure that people that attend the G-Skill OC World Cup can also participate in, uh, to the World Series competitions as well. So all that is gonna be sort of synced up so everything can happen nicely and everyone is having a good time. So if some overclockers have some uh, shows to attend, they can attend them and then go back to the, to the World Tour booth for the whole week. And uh, we'll be there, I think, Truthman, you will be there as well to, to stream. So we'll see you in a month in Taiwan, <laughs> I guess. I will definitely be there to uh, take care of the streams, uh, of course. Uh, actually, I will actually spend uh, three weeks in Taiwan uh, to actually spend some uh, some more time with you uh, with you guys to work on the, on the projects and, and make sure that everything uh, goes smoothly. You no, know, it's, uh, it's a big part of uh, being a volunteer and making this... Uh, no volunteers or you no know, part of the of the crew for for doing this is very important to you know uh, make sure that everything's working because we love we love this we are having fun doing it I'm pretty sure that's the the same as the guys at the LAN ETS uh, they love what they do and that's why they're doing it uh, this this much when I saw the the picture and the news I was like yeah that's 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 nice and Peter is always like. He's looking good. I don't think a lot of people will like that, but he's looking good. Well, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, he, he looks good in a suit for sure. Like, better than me. I'm more like, you know, I'm on the field kind of guy. 
he's definitely the the more public figure and he goes very well in that role so i think it was great he he went there sure he couldn't be there today but in the end the event went well anyway so it's also it's a good it's a good proof you know that we can pull off an event and have also him focus on the other things he he should be or can can be focusing on as well you know so everyone has kind of his uh, speciality and you know everyone has to as long as you are having a good time in what you're doing, that's all that matters. So we haven't announced anything for Computex, so here it is officially out now. Oh, and it um, is? yeah, I, yeah, I, the, I just saw the news. Oh yeah, well that's it. That's uh, that's <laughs> out there, and um, yeah, so we're looking forward to that. That's the next step. Well, that's uh, that's gonna be quite awesome to see all of this. Um, Timbade, do you want to uh, to talk about something special here at the LAN ETS that uh, you wanted? Because I might have one last question before we cut out the show. Okay, um, so what I liked the most at LAN ETS this year, uh, I loved the lounge where you had the nice couches to sleep. That was an amazing idea. You share and the cool thing, you know, usually in those LAN parties, I've been to DreamHack several times and they have that kind of lounge as well, but they have TVs there and stuff. So it's not a place where you can sleep and at night it closes because it's in the exhibitor area. So here people could actually crash on the couches. So I arrived this morning like around 6, 7 a.m., 7 a.m., I think or something like that. And there was like 20, 30 people sleeping there, like like dead bodies. And it was really wow. it was really fun yeah. and, and cool to watch. I was like, oh it's yeah, this this is great, you know, this is this is what a LAN party should be. It's um, named the AFK Lounge. So. <laughs> yeah, the F <laughs> AFK, AFK Lounge, AFK exactly. Lounge. It was a great naming as well, so that was really cool. And uh, another thing I think I liked as well is that uh, how you guys had set up the streaming booths upstairs as well with the, all the green screens and everything for all the different uh, casters and everything. That was also very well arranged and it was very nice too. So every team that had a caster, casters, they could uh, have a small space there with all the equipment kind of provided and necessary they, they, they needed to use. So that was, that was really nice. And you had a cool view from up there also on the LAN party down there the lights on the pillars and everything so the light on the pillars it's kind of a signature thing of the LAN ETS that's what you guys had in the other one yeah. you know you had those purple pillars with the LED lights on there and that was cool and that was like kind of like that thing I talked with Max the organizer and he was like I was asking so what about the lights on the pillars and stuff it was yeah we've, we've got some lights on the pillars okay cool you know so that, that was that was one of the things I, I really liked about it after I didn't play any games, so I don't know how the tournaments went, but that was cool. And for you, Christian, what, what was uh, your uh, the thing you liked the most about LAN ETS? Uh, <laughs> the entrance. <laughs> the entrance? Yeah, yeah, the entrance, definitely. <laughs> where, where the, the OC scene is. Oh, that, that's really it? Yeah, I, I haven't been uh, a lot upstairs, so I don't know uh, everything that is uh, is going on upstairs. But uh, <laughs> I think the I think the the big scene is the big scene is nice. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they have a massive stage this year. And you too. And for me, uh, the it's actually the mood and the feel of the of the event. It's always uh, super relaxed, and um, you know, it, it's like a, a big bunch of person gathering together just to play games even if them, some of them come especially for some of the tournaments it's still like a very you know like easy easy mood and uh, everything is going well and the cafeteria as well you know, I didn't saw the shitty this time <laughs> yeah, sadly not this year. Our uh, special cook uh, for the shitty uh, was away for the event. So next year maybe. Uh, that, that that was kind of kind of like a, a running gag of you guys having chili, like yeah. like serving chili at a land party is not something you would expect. Like hot dog, hamburgers, of course, like green cheese, but chili. <laughs> poutine. But, yeah. Oh, poutine. yeah. Actually, that was my last point. I was uh, speaking just before. Um, the 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 thing that we we did on on Friday evening, we went to eat poutine. So poutine is like the the main let's say, like the special kind of dish you can have in, in Quebec area here. And we went to a restaurant and they have this, this poutine that is called the, the heart attack. And it's, it's huge. The, the, the plate is, is huge. Like I think it's like five pounds of potatoes, three cans of meat. On, on the OCTV uh, no, Facebook no, no, or... No, or album for the event. So on the HWBot album of the event on facebook.com forward slash HWBot, you can find uh, some of the picture of this uh, massive poutine. So Christian, what was your... Because that was the first time you were trying that. Yeah, that was the first time I had this and uh, it was quite good. Actually. You're still digesting it? <laughs> mm, I don't think so. <laughs> 
If we go again tonight, do you take one? Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Timothy, how did you like it? I already said I like I love it. The poutine is like I could I could eat that every time. Last time we were only four guys eating it. Uh, three guys actually. Three guys, one poutine. <laughs> it was. It took us three days to finish it. <laughs> uh, so this time we were eight guys, and I w it was a lot. It was a lot better for health, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was less greasy for everyone. Um, Last question for you, uh, William. Do you usually eat poutine here? Uh, in Montreal? Um, yeah, no, but I mean by yourself. Do you eat poutine like every week? Or once Not a month? Not every week, but at least once a month. That's for sure. It's, there's always a reason to eat poutine. You know? <laughs> it's just your body is telling you, oh, no, don't go to this restaurant. There's a nice poutine place and you have not been for three weeks. So don't to... take the salad. Order yeah, the poutine. No. Exactly, but there's some crazy place in Montreal. You can do uh, some mix in your poutine. So. Yeah, that was crazy. Well, uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for uh, for being with us. Thank you, Christian, for being here as a judge as the uh, HW World Walter. Thank you, William, for the Land ETS and uh, being part of the organization and our guest here tonight on the OC Show Season 3, Episode 6. Uh, thank you, Timothy. We will, uh, we will see you guys tomorrow, uh, tomorrow on Sunday, starting at 10 a.m. We'll be starting the final of the HWBOT World Series here at the North America stop of the HWBOT World Tour at LAN ETS. That's a long name, but it's worth it. And we will, uh, unless the, until the next time, you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash overclocking TV in one word. You can find us here on Twitch. If you want to have the uh, uh, email tomorrow morning when we go live, uh, you can just follow and activate the email notification. And of course, you can find us on the LAN ETS team page on Twitch as well. So that's going to be quite interesting to see uh, all that. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. And until next time, keep pushing it.